memorials commemorate the Saints, honoring their heritage and rich culture that they contributed to the Cape. As you can see, there are some granite blocks here. To be precise, there are 11. These blocks are here as part of the slavery memorial. All the blocks together represent our common humanity. The different heights of the blocks represent growth and importance within the youth of South Africa. The two large blocks are engraved with the names of many slaves who helped in the building of Cape Town and those who suffered while doing so. The other nine blocks are engraved with words from the slave period in South Africa. The words come from the resistance, rebellion, suffering, the slave ships, the provenance of slaves, religion, life, punishment, and those from the slave lodge. The words run down the sides, of the, the sides and across the tops of the blocks. These 11 blocks are in memory of the slaves that were sold, tortured, and those that suffered at Church Square. Right here on Spin Street once stood a tree, but not just any tree. This tree was the old slave tree where slaves were auctioned when slavery was in full force in the Cape. The tree was not only used when auctioning the slaves, it was also used by the slaves for shelter while waiting for their owners in church. Sadly, the slave tree was cut down in 1916 and all that is left of it today is a small plaque. Personally, I don't think this little plaque is enough for the slaves that were auctioned to be remembered by, nor, do, nor does Nadia Glowe. Nadia has designed a tree sculpture that has been placed next to the plaque. As you can see, there are messages on the leaves and messages written on the tree. The tree it represents how important slaves were to the growth in the Cape and how much the slaves suffered to make it grow. This beautiful block of Dutch houses was once destined to be a parking garage. Restoring these 18th century houses so that they don't fall to the ground was one of the biggest projects the mother city ever undergoed. Archaeological research shows us that these buildings were originally used for commercial reasons. Gunsmiths, tobacconists, snuff makers and bakers had their shops here. If the city council had had its way, Heritage Square might not be here today. But luckily, the money to complete this project was never funded. In 2007, it was discovered that a vine decorating the courtyard of the hotel was planted around 7071. The grapevine is believed to be the oldest fruit-bearing plant in the southern hemisphere. The vine is re researched more, and it was discovered that it is the Crochon Blanc. The Crochon Blanc is one of the first varieties of grape brought from France. The vine still blooms every year without being fed or watered. As you can see, many of the historic features are still visible in the hotel. The hotel was built in the 1780s. When redoing each building on the block, everyone was different. Each building was handled to allow as many elements from the original building to be seen. The result is a beautiful historic building that is not crumbling to the ground. Today, the square includes a 15-bedroom hotel, restaurants, retail outlets, Officers and operating blacksmiths. Because of slavery in the Cape, we now have these beautiful areas of remembrance, such as these granite blocks, the tree block of the old slave tree, and the Heritage Square. All these memorials commemorate the slaves, honoring their heritage and rich culture that they contributed to the Cape. Okay, take 16. Wait, I thought the last one was take 17. Okay, it was actually. Yeah, and the one before that was take 18. So this okay, this 19. is take 32. You get the slavery memorial. <laughs> memorial. Memorial. I'm turning it to you, Lucy. Memorial. Memorial. My braces. Memorial. Something. Right, two. Three. We are at the slavery. Right, 
Do all these memorials to commemorate.